Hello and welcome. I'm Aaron Gentile, kindergarten through eighth grade principal at Life Christian Academy, and this is Eagle News. Our feature story for this week is about teachers who are playing the role of heroes. They may not have capes, but they certainly are rescuing students every day when it comes to their learning. I'd like to take you to an interview right now with a couple of our LCA teacher heroes. Well, here we are. I'm Aaron Gentile from Eagle News. I'm online in a Zoom chat with my buddy Josh Macbeth, uh, who is a high school teacher, math teacher at Life Christian Academy. Um, love working with you, Josh. And I want to congratulate you on, on receiving the Hero Teacher nomination for high school. Um, really proud of you and proud of the work that you're doing. So tell me what you're doing to help students make that transition to e-learning. Um, well, I think there's really two things that I've just tried to focus on as we transition to this. And uh, the first of the two is just trying to connect. You know, um, it's not about getting the assignment in necessarily. It's not about learning the material necessary. It's to make sure that the kids still know that they are the most valuable part of our school. Yeah. Um, and then the second part is, is I want them to feel a part of this. And so I've been really proactive in making sure that they have a voice. Um, I'll do surveys check-ins and then also do anonymous surveys from time to time just to make sure that they know um, that they're heard and I'll read back to them what I'm reading just so they can actively see that hey you got a voice in this you're part of this process and you're our priority that's perfect it sounds like you're trying to remind them in a, in a world that's gone online and everything becomes digital you're trying to remind them that um, there's still a human element that you're mm -hmm. still connected and I appreciate the work that you've done in that so thank you for that one. Let me ask another quick question here as we roll through um, just learning about this process and how we're engaging students and helping them learn. Uh, what tips do you have for students, either at LCA or anybody that's watching this, what tips do you have for students who are trying to adjust to this new learning environment? Oh, um, you know, I, I from a teacher, um, I want to first just say that as you adjust to this, like, know that myself and from what our teachers I've heard that we understand that this is a transition that we aren't holding you to perfection we're just holding you to just progress in some level um going into this like you guys are learning a life skill right now you're learning ownership you're learning how to manage yourself which is a lifelong lesson that not everybody learns just because you grow up doesn't mean you learn this and so when learning how to manage yourself if I could just advise anything is like start your day off with just a few minutes to like maybe just write in, okay, this is what I need to do today. Instead of flying by the hip and just looking at websites, write it down and keep it simple. Whether it be for some of you who like to do it out for like a week or some of you like to do that for the day or even just a small piece of it, just take some step in planning ahead. Because if you're just gonna base your decisions on reaction, if you're just gonna be like, oh, I gotta do this, let's do it now, um, you're not setting yourself up for success. Yeah, you gotta plan for success, it doesn't just happen. That's perfect. I love that idea of this, that students are learning a life skill right now as they transition. And one of the greatest life skills you can have is that proactive and planning. So great, great tip there. Um, how about this one? How are you keeping a focus on learning rather than just uh, having students complete work? Because that's a challenge when you're in this environment. Oh, yes. This is an active and ongoing conversation. So I can... Um, the, my best answer is still up for critique here. Uh, but right now, um, for example, we just had our algebra class 
Uh, okay. One of my favorite units is we're talking about exponents and compound interest. And what I did is I Doesn't gave that them sound a couple. Awesome, everybody. Exponents <laughs> and compound interest. And yes, Not yes. a lot of people say this is my favorite uh, subject or favorite content. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to investments and making money and understanding debt, it is, I think, very interesting. Yeah, so, but what I did is I've been trying to give the kids um, floor assignments instead of ceiling assignments. So, for example, like uh, getting facts right or like filling out a, you know, cross or something like that. I think that's a scene assignment because once you're done, you're done. But a floor assignment is like, okay, here is your start. What do you think? No rubric, nothing like that. What do you think? And so one of the assignments we did this week was, I gave them an S&P 500, uh, stocks, a bonds, and an index fund. And I said, hey, what do you think? What happens here, low risk, high risk? And it just used plugging in some equations. And I had kids go from researching what the history were of those to understanding how to present that analysis to some kids were got really into the 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 the, the character of who they were and pretended they were on a yacht. I mean, there was just a lot of variety to it. So. It's always a challenge uh, because I, I was brought up in a system that was curriculum based. And so learning to be creative is a challenge. But right now I found that creativity in any level has really been what promotes learning in this environment. That's huge. Yeah, so true. I hope it doesn't surprise you to know that I've uh, actually heard quite a few of the presentations that came out of that assignment, seeing as my daughter is part of that class. Uh, yeah. She's really engaged in the assignment and loves sharing, <laughs> sharing with me some of the best um, presentations that came out of it. So well done. I agree. Yeah, it's a challenge uh, in this environment where we're shifting from a classroom traditional to an online platform. Um, you know, it's, it's real easy as a teacher to think, I just want to give them tasks so that when they get the task done, they can cross it off and I can give them a grade. But that doesn't necessarily equate to deep, learning and and I appreciate and that's again another reason why you're in that hero category you're going deeper with students and helping them to think about mathematics not just solve problems so yeah. well done Josh one more question for you as we wrap this up um, you know I as you're trying to help uh, these students focus and you're trying to help teachers focus what kind of tips would you give to teachers who I know are all learning this, this new thing and, and they're all trying to figure everything out one day at a time. What kind of tips would you give for your colleagues? Um, hmm. Well, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in the same boat, you know, uh, I just did some deep YouTube work before all this started. Um, I would say start small, just pick yeah. one thing and see if it works. Let the kids know that you're trying something new and, and it actually might be more valuable if it didn't work out just because it's good for kids to see us not get it all right. And Love just that. have fun, you know, like just be yourself, have fun. Don't take yourself too serious. If you make a mistake, um, those have been kind of my three mantras start small, see if it works. If it makes a mistake, tell the kids, Hey, we're doing this together. Fantastic. I love that. And again, it brings the human side of it um, right into that online environment. You know, uh, some of the videos I've created, I've, I find myself stuttering or saying something wrong. And I'm like, oh, I just want to record the whole thing over. Right. Like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't have to be perfect. I'm still a human. And I'm just trying to work on this art of communication and teaching through a brand new platform because I certainly wouldn't record myself and then replay myself in a classroom when I'm teaching live. No, I make mistakes when I'm teaching live too. Right. So that's great, Josh. Again, I appreciate your time tonight. You're a hero teacher, you're, crea you're creative, you're courageous, uh, and you're so kind to these kids and I appreciate that. So way to go, Mr. Macbeth, congratulations to you. No, thanks, Aaron, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Yep. All right. Well, welcome to Eagle News. This is the Hero Teacher segment at Life Christian Academy. And we recognize that all teachers are doing fantastic things, not only for LCA, but all across the, the continent right now and all around the world with, with this transition to e-learning as we deal with this global pandemic. Uh, with that being said, I'm here today with Becky Losey, who, who has been nominated as one of our high school teacher heroes and she's shrugging it off again because she doesn't want me, want me to express it but I think she's doing a great job and the purpose of our interview today is just to kind of hear what she's doing that um, is helping her students stay focused on learning and what she's doing to maintain uh, her own 
teaching sanity and maybe this can encourage some teachers as well. So let's start with this, Becky. Uh, what are you doing to support students during this transition to e-learning? Um, the biggest thing, at least according to my students that they really like, is I send a group email on Mondays um, or Tuesday mornings sometimes, if I don't get everybody done um, on Monday, that kind of outlines the week and mm -hmm. their tasks. And then that information also ends up on the homework page, but they really like being able to kind of see a map of what they need to get done so they can organize their time. Um, also, we, I use Flipgrid to do real quick, short explainer videos on concepts when I need to and to mm -hmm. respond individually to kids. Um, and then we do Zoom meetings to go over assignments. Fantastic, and that was one of the things I was gonna bring up was that idea of your Flipgrid uh, quick chatting back and forth because math, as we know in education, is one of the subjects that needs immediate feedback. You can't uh, practice a concept incorrectly for a couple of days and then have the teacher respond. So when you're doing these Flipgrid things, are you, is it, are you able, I'm sorry, to provide the feedback that you think students need to guide their learning? Um, I think so. Uh, I should have said before they ever do the flip grids, we also use Delta Math. Um, okay. And the nice thing about Delta Math is they do get immediate feedback mm -hmm. um, with the work shown and can watch a video right in the moment as well. Oh, that's fantastic. That And that is so necessary for math. Well, let me ask this next question. Uh, I really want to keep the focus on student learning. So what tips do you have for students? And um, they could be at LCA or anywhere. What tips would you give to a high school student uh, who's trying to figure out the just the, the navigating the world of e-learning? The first one is to use some kind of calendar or planner. Mm -hmm. My seniors are saying that this is the first time that they've actually felt like they needed to use a planner. And so yeah. they're using paper planners more and calendar planners. Um, participate actively when you're in a, in a video session or you're watching a video, even if it's not live. So take notes, have paper out, um, mm -hmm. have your calculator available. Do one thing at a time instead of trying to do multiple things. I know that I, I get stuck in, oh, I'm doing this and now I'm doing this. And then I get lost in the, in the mix. Yeah. Um, make a list if you're not using a planner. Set a timer so that you are working for a period of time and then take a break. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, those are great tips. That's fantastic. I know uh, one of the hardest things for me is I miss, I know it sounds weird, but I miss the bell schedule. Um, you know, being a teacher, when, when the bell rings, you know that you're ready to transition to a new task. And so sometimes I think I just need to have an alarm on my clock that dings to remind me, okay, stop what you're focusing on, go to the next thing. Uh, and, and I agree. So using, I'm using a calendar and a planner in a much different way than I was even uh, a couple of weeks ago. So good tips, good tips. How about for teachers? What would you say to our fellow, fellow teachers? I would say the same thing. Um, I have a to-do list with boxes on it that I check mm -hmm. off. Um, I've been trying to set some boundaries with, uh, with a timer and with my calendar in general to give myself periods of time where I'm not staring at a screen because of the amount of screen time this is requiring. Yeah. Um, and when you get something done, take a break. Mm -hmm. Go outside with your dog, go visit your cat, have a cup of coffee, sit in the sunshine, yeah. all those kinds of things. That's so good. Yeah, teachers, remember how, that you need to stay healthy as well. Uh, so set boundaries, make sure that you, you know that you can take a break and, and step outside and go for a walk. I, I feel like every time I'm in a Zoom meeting for an hour and a half, that's a, a lot of sitting or an hour, that's a lot of sitting. And I, I walk out of the office and, and Mrs. Beatty is always there to say, how are you doing, Aaron? And I said, great, I just need to get my legs moving for a few minutes. I'll be back. And I'll walk around the school, pray a little bit, and get right back into to the next task and the next thing on my list with the checkbox. So you're right, Mrs. Losey. Thank you again for your time today. I appreciate it. You are a teacher hero, not only to me, but to so many of your students and parents. Um, so congratulations and thank you. You're welcome. And of course, Eagle News wouldn't be complete without good news with Mrs. Warbreck. Take it away, Mrs. Warbreck. Welcome to another episode of Good News with Mrs. Warbreck. Our first item of good news comes from parent Stacy Calum. She writes, Ryler is loving his work while the other boys are doing theirs. 
thanks LCA Preschool for providing all the work for him to feel like he is still in school. Way to go, LCA Preschool. Our second item of good news comes from the Tacoma News Tribune. If you haven't caught this scoop yet, we want to congratulate our own Amari Milana, who was recently awarded the basketball prestige of making the all area team. Woohoo! Way to go, Amari. We are proud of you. Our final item of good news for this week comes from kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Gentile, who posted, I have a new student in my class. Last week, he joined our Zoom meeting and met his classmates. We ended our meeting saying our core values and then said a prayer together. As soon as the prayer ended, her new student said, teacher, I have to tell the class something. God loves them and he'll forgive them even when they mess up. It looks like Mrs. Gentile has a new preacher in her class. Welcome new students. We are so glad that you are here. And that's it for another episode of Good News with Mrs. Warbrick. If you have good news to share, hashtag LCA good news on any social media platform, we will find it and it may even be featured on our next episode of Good News. All right. Have a great day, everyone. That's all the time that we have for you this week. God bless you and make it a great day. Go Eagles!